When we first started exploring the Caribbean by sailboat almost eight years ago, we had a huge amount to learn. We had to figure out every aspect of this new lifestyle, like how to live in such a small space, how to feel comfortable in foreign countries, and how to constantly deal with the dangers of sailing from one remote anchorage to the next. That first year of sailing was so full of intense experiences, both intensely good and intensely bad. And through those experiences, we learned that sometimes doing things the hard way and learning to become competent at something difficult can reap rewards beyond our wildest dreams. And in in so many ways, I feel like our choice to raise our newborn baby on a sailboat has brought us back to square one. We have once again chosen to do things the hard way, a way that might seem at times like we're just banging our heads against a wall. I don't see what the routine is yet at all. But a way that I hope may once again lead to rewards that we now can't even fathom. <laughs> But all of that is in the far future. Now we've got to figure out the nuts and bolts of raising a baby on a boat and hope that our desire to sail the world actually survives this crazy transition. Um, guys, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Bio soap. Well, thank you for all the help, CEO. Thornton, thank you. Next time she'll be a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> all right, how you feel, buddy? Sad. Yeah? But I mean, I'm feeling a lot better. I can hold her and walk now, which is good, so I think my recovery is coming along. Yeah, I think it's time for us to like, get back on the boat and figure out our schedule and everything. Cause it was all theoretical before, you know, now it's mm. real. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you're a real thing. <laughs> yes, you are. I better go feed her. All right, go ahead, babe. Timber. Yeah. So how do you feel about your new family, buddy? Los has been so good and patient. <laughs> he has been. He's what like, I really like that thing. I really wish I could lick it, <laughs> but also for just staring at it. He's sneaked in a couple of eggs. Yeah, he does. Moments like this just make it feel so nice and cozy. Mm -hmm. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Good job carrying her for nine months. Good job dealing with the C-section. Good job putting up with the recovery. Good job. Thank you. Thanks for doing all the diaper changes. <laughs> and you little thing, good job with your Tai Chi. Yes. And good job with your pooping. And good job with making the most weird facial expressions I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Yeah, look at those facial expressions. Baby Tai Chi. Oh, oh, is it time to cry? I think it's baby changing's time. All right, well, the moment has finally come to move out of our Airbnb because all our family has left. And now we are just back down to two buds, a baby, and a dog, and a whole bunch of stuff. Here's our ride. The marina was nice enough to bring their truck to help us take all of our stuff over. All right, got the baby on the boat. Got a lot of stuff freaking everywhere. Got a very tired husband. This is gonna be interesting, man. Doing all of this and being this sleep deprived, you know? It's okay, bud. We'll get there. We just need to organize our lives, make a game plan, execute the game plan, deal with no sleep ever again. <laughs> Boom. All right, well now it's time to find where we're gonna put all of this stuff. Hmm. Yep. Let's do it. So Desiree and the baby are asleep. I figured I'd just kind of chat real quick about how I've been feeling the last, you know, couple weeks. And uh, like, I'll be honest, I was struggling hard for the first 
week and a half, I think. The, the serious lack of sleep, the negative experience of the birth, and I don't know, like I just, I kind of got depressed, honestly. Like I, I went through a depression. I've been kind of struggling with that because a lot of the stories that I'm being told about people's experience with their babies and becoming parents is one of difficulty and struggle, but like overwhelmingly worth it. And, and like with a obvious o overt positive tinge to the whole experience. And I would say that for the first nine days, mine was overtly negative, but there was nothing I could do about it. And I've been feeling a lot better. In a way, it sort of feels like I'm killing the old me, right? And I'm figuring out who the new me is. It's sort of like when we first bought Atticus 1, it's just so daunting, like looking at this giant mountain and being like, okay, we gotta get to the top of that. And you're at the bottom. And it's just like, how in the world are we gonna get up there? And now I'm accepting the fact, I'm like, okay, the way you get up the mountain is you just take one step at a time and you just, start going up. The purpose that I'm feeling now is actually more like the purpose you feel on a passage. It's very similar. You are just exhausted, you're sleep deprived, there's problems that need to be solved, and in managing that day to day and just continuing the struggle, just surviving takes all of your focus and all of your energy. And down the road we're gonna figure out how to get sailing again, but this week we're just gonna figure out how to clean up poop, how to make sure Issa doesn't pee on herself, how to make sure she doesn't have too much gas. Just the simple, basic stuff, you know? How's it going, buddy? Ah, uh, good. It's like day, I don't know, 15 or 16? Of having baby? Of having baby. Yeah, I think she's 14 years old. 14 Days years. old. Oh my God. <laughs> We're kind of getting into a routine, which is nice. I don't see what the routine is yet yeah. at all. We needed groceries like four days ago and we were just like, we're gonna order groceries today and we just didn't get to it. No, and then it's we, hilarious. And then we did, but then it's New Year's, so everything's closed. They're like, cool, 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 I got your order. We'll have it to you in three days. Is yeah. that does that work for you? I'm like, no, we need food. Yeah. She's not quite colicky, but she has been crying a lot recently and we've kind of realized it's because she's got a lot of gas. And so this is one strategy to like move the gases around in her belly. I just like her face when I do it to her. <laughs> How can you sleep during this, baby? How you doing, man? Are you the delivery yeah, driver? Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks, okay. Got it. All right, well, I cannot believe our luck because just as the groceries arrived, Issa was ready for a nap. So put her down in bed until she wakes up. So fingers crossed it lasts more than five minutes. <laughs> frantically trying to get everything done because I don't know how much time we have. Yeah, so I've personally been blown away by just how chaotic the schedule of a newborn is. She might sleep for 20 minutes, she might sleep for an hour and a half, she might start crying any minute, she might poop like three times in the next hour. This happening where we're both doing something and being productive, it hasn't happened. I feel like it happens like 20 minutes every day. <laughs> I don't think so. Even at that. Yeah. I don't think it's happened yet. Yeah, so I better shut up and get to work. I know. Yeah, so one thing about this whole having a newborn on a boat experience has been that all the other aspects of living on a boat that are less convenient than living in a house are starting to be more apparent and like more of a problem. So like Desiree right now, having to go through each bag of meat that we bought, put it into a Ziploc bag, and then store them in the deep storage in the freezer. Just little stuff like that, that normally is like, eh, whatever. They're all starting to stack up so that what little time that like typical parents would have in a house, we don't have because of all those little inefficient elements of life on a boat. Hi, you, hi. 
Oh, what a good girl. Hi. <laughs> So how's walking baby, buddy? It's nice. It feels good to get off the boat, and then it's really cool just visually to be in this like Disneyland of a world back here. There's these just really beautiful buildings and structures, and I feel really lucky. I think like every day we're getting better at incorporating things that are good for us into our day, so we both love walking, and I'm excited to continue walking all around the world with this little baby attached to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just yawned at the same time. <laughs> He's like, I'm the baby too. <laughs> yeah, so today I'm excited because we are going to give baby her first bath. The bath day has been on our schedule for the last like six days straight. We're like, today's the day. And then it's like five o'clock and we're like, oh, okay, tomorrow's the day. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Hi, welcome back. Yeah, you made it. You made it. You're out of baby jail. Ready for this? It's gonna be weird. Is that kind of nice? A little bit? It's okay, it's okay. There you go, baby. Is that nice? Cute little feetsies. What just happened, bud? Okay, so we've been trying to get her to accept the pacifier. And like, she, the weirdest thing is that she totally loved it for 24 hours. And that was like three days ago. And then we keep trying to get her to take it. And she wouldn't take it for like the last three days. And she finally took it again. Uh -oh. oh, come on, keep going. Uh, okay, she was doing this earlier and I just kind of did that. Uh -huh. And then it's like, she was like, oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that nice? There you go. Come on, Isa. Just keep going. Isn't that nice? Well, who knows how long this will last yeah. for. What time is it? I think it's like 1, 1.30. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All I've done is fed her, burped her, and changed her diaper. But it is my birthday today, so I am going to get myself some hot chocolate. Best birthday present ever so far is that she accepted that pacifier. <laughs> All right, well, this is my first solo walk on my own off the boat with Isa. Isa's just totally zenned out. I'm getting my exercise and fresh air, and I'm getting ready to get my hot chocolate for my birthday. So, today's a good day. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <sighs> That's delicious. Ooh, all right, well, I finally have a moment to myself where I feel well rested and I feel like I'm getting the hang of Issa 
uh, and her body language and her needs. Um, and I'm getting a lot more confidence in myself. So I feel like I'm finally coming up for air as myself, as like the person that I see as Desiree. I think I've learned to be way more gentle with myself, to try to drop expectations going forward about parenthood, um, to be okay if things are really, really difficult. And I think um, having Issa has made us both way stronger. I feel like I had like a bodysuit on before of who I thought I was and I like peeled it open and I'm stepping out and who I am now is someone who I'm really happy with. I also just want to thank um, all of our viewers and especially patrons out there for all of your just incredibly sweet and encouraging messages and notes and and gifts. It really does just feel like we have this big extended family supporting us. I just I like can't believe we're parents now. It just it feels so unreal. I'm a mom. so cool because I think she's gotten to a point where like my voice actually soothes her at first when she was a newborn it's like everything was just startling to her but now she opens her eyes and like looks directly at me and I don't know if I'm making it up but I feel like if I tell her it's okay her eyes just like fall immediately mm -hmm. it's moments like this where I'm like man she's so cute my little tadpole <laughs> <sighs> All right, bud. See you in the morning. <laughs> Love you. Sleep well, little Issa. Strapping in for liftoff. Oh, you gotcha. Here you go. All right, so we are starting to get settled into kind of, you know, life on the boat with a baby. So we've got a couple of strategies so far. They're not set in stone, but they are working. And we're pretty surprised with how relatively easy it's been boat wise to have a baby. And more on that is gonna be our baby officer, Desiree. Hi, brought to you from Atticus 2. <laughs> this is, I guess, one thing to start with. Jordan mm. doesn't like it because it's clunky, so he has to be the one to go get it. I don't know if you've noticed too, but I'm very anti-additional stuff on the boat. And this is one of those things where I'm like, do we really need that thing? Mm. So Desiree has to prove that it's gonna be really okay. useful. First of all, it folds up flat. There you go, go on, make it look good. We wanna keep this thing. Folds up flat. <laughs> So, Bud, you want to go over our sleeping arrangement? Yes, as soon as the captain takes her rum. Okay, it's got like <laughs> mm, probably 45 seconds to explain the V-Birth. Let's go. So, this is where Issa and I sleep. When I need a changer, boom, changing station, ready to go. This is my little diaper station. We do have a bassinet on the boat. It's just folded up, and at some point we'll actually show it to you. This is the quarter berth. I finally cleaned it. Look how nice this is. I got all my tools out and then behind the tools, because let's face it, tools, they're more important. Behind the tools is all the baby crap. And then as for my sleeping arrangement, I sleep here. And I do like this arrangement in that the table is really easy to put up and down. It doesn't take much time. I definitely miss sleeping with Desiree, but I'm kind of thinking after she's three months old, that's when we'll probably try to move her to a bassinet. But we will see. We've learned that everything changes. Lisa, do you want to say anything? She's like, oh my God, I can't believe I have to live on this boat. <laughs> These people are nuts. Get me out of here. Yeah, I just, uh, I feel like we're over the hump and I feel so just happy and accomplished and like ready for what's next, you know? I too feel like I've come just 180 degrees, just full circle from how I felt two weeks ago when we first moved on to the boat from the Airbnb. I'm honestly excited to figure out how are we going to sail this boat with her? How are we going to live in all kinds of different places? How are we going to live at anchor? It's gonna be quite an adventure.
What's going on guys? Future Jordan here. Uh, first of all, Isabella is six weeks old now. I'm doing a lot better. I'm feeling great. I'm like totally in love with Issa. I'm kind of over that dark spell that I was having. I, I just really am enjoying fatherhood. It's been really hard, but gratifying. I did want to say that this is the second episode now where we've mentioned the fact that Issa's delivery was a bit of a negative experience. Desiree and I have kind of gone back and forth on whether we should discuss the specifics of what made the experience kind of negative, and we've kind of landed on the fact that we'd like to keep it private. Now, I mean, there's what a bazillion different ways that you can have a somewhat negative birth experience, delivery experience. So suffice to say, we had one of those and that it kind of put a bit of a damper on the first week, week and a half of our lives as parents and made it a little bit harder. You know, emotionally, it, it took us some time to kind of get to a place where we could kind of feel everything was, was uh, positive and going well. So obviously we're thrilled that Desiree is healthy, that Issa is alive and healthy. And so, Everything worked out. It was a bit of a tough time for us. We're over it. Everything's going really well now. Um, we hope you forgive us for not diving into the details about that. And otherwise, we will catch you guys on the next episode.